Hi, uh, Karen, can you hear me? You can hear. Oh. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you. Nice display picture, Anand. Okay. Good morning, guys. Uh, hope you all are doing well. You're all doing well? Shira, how were you doing? You weren't well now last week. You weren't well last week. A bunch of you were not well. Yeah? All okay now? Amazing. Awesome. Okay, I hope you guys online are doing well. Nina, Karen, Shiv Kumar. Okay. Great. Um, so yeah, we've been uh, going through this course on ministering divine uh, healing. Um, so we are in chapter seven now. We'll get started with chapter seven. Um, and then we'll see where we finish today. Okay. Uh, it, so out of the six chapters that we've completed, um, tell me a couple of things that you've learned that um, that you remember. I'm not doing a memory test. What I'm asking is. Uh, of these six chapters that we've covered, or in these six chapters we've covered, uh, what's the one or two things that kind of stood out to you and that that you feel like you'll be carrying with you after you graduate and go? God's, God's nature to heal everyone, OK. S sorry, Francis. Everybody can minister healing and deliverance. Yeah, thank you. What else? He is God. He wants to do whatever he wants to do. Very good. <laughs> okay, uh, what else? You, you can tell me more than one point. Just because I said, okay, one point, you deserve to say. <laughs> Yeah, healing and deliverance depends on the person of Jesus and not in the methods or in the process. Yeah, that's a very important point. Okay, what else? Vimal, anything? The fullness of God is expressed in the person of Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah, thank you, Vimal. Everything? Sorry. Great. Right, yeah, everything we do is dependent on who he is and not on us. Yeah, thank you. Okay, anything else? Anand? Okay, yeah. Um, you know what my next question is. So, uh, what is, uh, what is, uh, so Anand says some seven principles. Yeah. Uh, the will of God, the exercise of faith, the flow of compassion, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Okay. The methods Jesus used. The nature of Jesus is revealed. Okay. The nature of Jesus is miracles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, the principles. Okay. Uh, anything else? Sri Radha. <laughs> Sorry, Vijay. Were you saying something uh, about humility? Or, yeah. Yeah, humility. Okay. Nikhil, anything? Minister. Okay, so Nikhil used to think um, well, we have another mic that can go around. Um, so Nikhil was saying that uh, that he would he used to think that uh, only pastors can minister healing and deliverance, okay. But now 
everyone can every believer can okay all right still other i have not forgotten you bolo miracles help and encourage people to believe in jesus more yeah absolutely all right wait i will thank you all for sharing because i'm sure there is more than just one point that we can just take away uh, even after you graduate especially after you graduate because uh, everything that you learn here and if you don't do it after you graduate and go out of these compound walls is useless okay uh, bill johnson says bible study without bible experience is useless okay <laughs> bible study without bible experiences are useless okay so you can study everything about the bible and about the things that jesus did and what not he has called us to do some more uh, and if we don't walk in that um it, it's just waste okay uh, so let's look at uh, chapter 7 getting into it uh, this chapter uh, looks at the practical guidelines in on ministering healing okay practical guidelines now um, i want to start off by turning our attention our focus on the title of this chapter itself it says practical guidelines not rules there's a difference okay there's a difference between rules and guidelines rules is like you have to have to follow this right there's like the old saying no rule is rule even for a okay but guidelines are saying okay hey all of this will help you you can try this out it's not saying you have to do this okay um so practical guidelines on ministering healing now we are going to learn a few ways to minister healing but everything that we will learn about ministering it's the same for receiving healing as well so i can just change the title of this chapter and say practical guidelines on receiving healing all of these points are the same will remain the same okay so everything that we are about to learn in this chapter is not only about us learning how to minister but also to receive and i think it's very important for us to learn to receive uh in in any aspect of our lives okay um and I, 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 I'm sorry, I keep bringing this up, but then I've seen this a lot of Christians, only these Christians do, especially worship leaders of musicians. And all. Uh, after the worship service, or whenever you go and tell them, it's like, brother or sister, it's a like, wonderful worship. You sang really well. Uh, it's like, oh, no, brother, it's not me. It's all God. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, oh, Shai is coming. You know, no. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, you, people say it's like oh it's you know, it's not me brother it's all god and i'll be like it's not it wasn't that good <laughs> uh but the thing is it's very important for us to learn that to receive say thank you praise god you know what i'm saying because if we don't learn to receive uh we will not have a crown to give before the king right if we don't learn to receive honor we will not know how to give honor or to we, you will not have a crown to give before the king you know what i'm saying so as much as we are christians leaders and ministers uh, we are being equipped and trained to minister it's also very important for us to learn to receive right uh, it's I, I, we can give so many examples of it uh, like even help Sometimes he's like, can I help you? He's like, no, no, I can do this on my own. Like my son is like, I want to hold your cycle. He's like, no, Dada, leave me. I, I can do this on my own. Uh, even receiving help talks about our humility. You know what I'm saying? He's like, why should I take from him? Why should she help me? Why should I receive healing from him? I can do this on my own. Do you see a tinge of pride in it? yes um and so just being able to receive things in life uh in, in 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 a beautiful way is very important okay so ministering healing and receiving healing all of this will come under the same um aspect of it okay are you guys with me so what we are going to attempt to learn in this chapter is different methods different ways uh, as it says different guidelines uh, but again what we've seen is 
it's not in the process or in the methods, but it is all about the person of Jesus. Okay, so here's the first, let's go. Here's the first guideline is one, through personal faith in God. Okay, how do we minister healing or how do we receive healing is one through personal faith in God, right? So let's look at the notes. It says, God has declared that his word is medicine to our body. Um, okay, I'm... Is, is another mic ready? Okay. Just, if you don't mind, just keep it so that when you read it, um, those online, we don't have another corded mic? Okay, never mind, guys. So let's see if you can get that ready for the next class. As I'll read most of the scriptures. Proverbs 4, right, okay. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. Uh, don't get distracted by them. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. It says, <coughs> Excuse me. My son, pay attention to what I say. Pay attention, guys. <laughs> okay, my children. Okay. Oh. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Okay, yeah, Prince, keep that with you, okay? Um, verse 22, for they are life to those who find them and health to one holds, uh, one's whole body. Okay, so God has declared that his word is medicine to our entire body. Uh, and... And when faith is mixed with the word that we receive, God's power is released. So with his word, when we take his word, right? Why do we do this declaration every Sunday? This is God's word. This morning also you all did, right? Yeah, I heard it. Right? Every day and every Sunday, we, every week after week, we declare it, isn't it? Uh, okay, why is it important to declare uh, his word? When it mixes with our faith, it releases the power of God. Are you with me? Yes. Um, let's try and do one uh, demonstration. Okay. Uh, Prince, you have the mic with you. Okay. Can you use the mic? Um, okay. So what I'd like you to do is uh, in your mind, start counting between 1 and 10. I'm not going to read his mind, guys. It's like, oh, he's going to read his mind. Okay. I'll, I'll say start. And uh, that's when you start counting 1 and 10 in your mind. Is that okay? All right, start. What's your name? Prince. Okay. What were you thinking? Or which number were you when I asked you your question? Four. Four. Okay. So you can be thinking one thing. This is just a very simple example, right? You can be thinking one thing, but you declared something else. He was counting between one and ten. But when I asked the question, he said what? The context is different. So the point is, you can be thinking anything you want in life. Whatever. Like you can. Only he knows what you're thinking, right? But let's say, for example, you're going through something and you really don't like what you're going through, a storm in life and whatnot, right? You're thinking that you're negative, you're feeling oppressed, you're feeling depressed and whatnot. But you declare something else. His word is life. He sent his word and healed my disease. What are you doing? You're thinking something else, but it doesn't matter. But you're declaring life. Are you with me? And so that is what's happening here is you are mixing God's word with faith. And that releases the power of God over you. Right? And verse after verse, scripture after scripture, we have, okay, his word releases life. His word is life. He sent his word and he healed, you know, uh, and healed our diseases. By his stripes, we are healed. It may be looking like something very different, but you're declaring something uh, very different. Are you guys with me? Yes? No? Are you understanding? Okay. So, uh, first guideline is through personal faith in God. Okay. So you can have faith in God for your own healing. Um, example, the woman with an issue of blood. That's in Matthew chapter 9. 
Okay, you can have faith in God for your own healing. Uh, the two blind men uh, or one of the ten lepers. Um, and you can also have faith in God for healing of others. Okay, so faith in God can be expressed in variety of ways. Believing and speaking. Okay, can uh, someone read uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10? Uh, Prince, if you don't mind, since you have the mic. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. We all know that verse. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It's fine. It's okay, Prince. You found it? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Thank you. So believing in your heart and declaring it, is it? <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Okay, so faith can be expressed. One, by believing and speaking, confessing. And the second thing is believing and acting on that faith. Okay, you just can't say, uh, so we call this as exercising your faith, isn't it? Yes or no? Exercising faith. Say everybody say exercise. Faith. Okay, so how many of you would believe if you say, if I tell you that I'm sitting, guys, I'm working out. I'm working out right now. Am I? I'm doing pull-ups, guys. Seriously, trust me. I'm doing push-ups. Can't you all see? <laughs> uh, guess what I'm saying, right? We all seem to like the idea of faith. We like the idea of exercising faith, but we don't exercise. I mean, all of us like the idea of waking up early, going to the gym, or going walking, staying fit, and uh, have some kind of a pack instead of a family pack. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? OK, we all like to believe that. It's a good idea. Bindas, like, what an idea, Sarji, right? <laughs> but we don't act on it. We all like the idea of it. But this is what Christian life is all about. It's not enough that you just like the idea. You should. It's not enough that you like the idea of Christianity. It's not enough to like the idea of the cross. It's not enough to like the idea that you like the word of God. It's not enough for you to have, you know, say, I like the idea that I love Jesus and not show it in your actions. Waste. Absolute waste. It is not enough to say that you only like this idea. So what I'm trying to say is it's not enough to say that you have faith and not act and not declare it. Are you guys with me? Right? Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a, an expression of obedience. Think about Joshua. And God says, you know, you know, wall of Jericho, Sunday school story, isn't it? Um, every day for seven days, one go one round around it. On the seventh day, go seven times around the wall. Now you tell me, is there power in them walking around the wall? Are they releasing some kind of power? They obeyed and they expressed their faith, isn't it? And that unleashes the power of God to bring down walls, isn't it, guys? Um, and so that's what faith is. It's, it's all about believing what God has done for you, what he's doing for you. You speak it. You have to speak it and then act on it. Okay, this is for you and for those around you. Remember, this is a, this can be two sermons. You can preach the same sermon two different Sundays, change the title, same notes, how to minister healing, part one, how to receive healing, part two, same sermon notes. Are you guys with me? Right. So uh, one is so. What's the first point? Guideline is through personal faith in God. Look at that. It's through personal. It begins with you. Personal. Right. You build that relationship with Him. That personal relationship. That intimate relationship with Him. 
uh, it all begins with that relationship, that intimate relationship, isn't it? Okay. Um, so it's the same thing for uh, exercising your faith for yourself and for others. And the second guideline is through the prayer of agreement. To the, through the prayer of agreement. Okay. In the notes, it says Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 and 20. Matthew 18, verse 18 and 20. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Okay, so again, um, we do this being in agreement while releasing our faith and exercising our God-given authority. Uh, what is the authority, guys? What is authority? What is our God-given authority? Tell me. Everybody, all of you, I keep saying, no? We all like the idea that we've, you know, God has given us authority. What Jesus has done on the cross? What Jesus, the authority that Jesus had, he's given to us? Yeah, okay. So what is that? There is no agreement to what Nikhil is saying. And we are talking about having agreement. Bye. Look at them, Nickel, and ask them, agree with me, guys. Tell them. Tell. <laughs> Not just him. <laughs> okay. Uh, is okay, if there's another similar word for agreement, what would that be? A similar word for agreement. Okay. So we came in agreement. Uh, sorry? Covenant. Okay. Unity, yeah, yeah. Covenant unity, it's all yeah similar, right? Um, in the new church, in the New Testament, you see that time and time and time again, it says the believers gather together in one accord, in one accord, in unity, in unity. Sorry, sorry. Consent. 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 Ah, huh, okay. So you like you're giving them consent. Is that what you're saying? Oh, right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you were saying something? Right. Yeah, agreement, covenant. Uh, I just reminded of this one thing uh, of covenant. God, see, God is a covenant keeping God, no? Uh, <laughs> Our God is so good that he made a covenant with a ma man while he was sleeping. While he was sleeping. Who's that man? The Jacka. <laughs> okay. You can read about this, but Solomon, right? He's dreaming. The man is sleeping. You get what I'm saying? He is sleeping. And God makes a covenant with the man who is sleeping in his dreams. Uh, I mean, okay, so that should say something about our God, right? So, uh, so to say the least that there is power in agreement, then when two or three are gathered together, when we come together, uh, what is the, what is the difference between our gathering or any other get together? The world has parties. They all have togethers. They all have come together do barbecue. What is the difference? Yeah, thank you, Nina. Dhanyava. Shukriya. Right, so verse 20 in Matthew chapter 18, it says, For where two or three are gathered together in 
my name. That's the whole thing. That's right. Uh, when we are gathered together in His name, um, that is the differential uh, equation. Okay, so uh, there is power in agreement through the prayer of agreement, um, and that's another second guideline. The next one is through the prayer of faith, through the prayer of faith. Okay, James chapter five, verse fourteen and fifteen. Um, James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, it says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anything, uh, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. <clears throat> And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Okay, um, so verse 14, uh, is anyone among you sick? Let, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. Um, John 14, 14, is, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Okay, Matthew 21, 22, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Okay, um, so in James, of course, we know um, that they, they call for, it says, James is writing, call the elders of the church and let them pray for you, let them release a prayer of faith. But we also know that, sure, the leaders of the church can pray for you, the elders of the church can pray for you, minister healing. But if there's one th another thing that we've learned is that all believers can minister healing and deliverance. Isn't it? Yes, you agree, right? It's not just for pastors, or uh, teachers, or healing evangelists, etc., etc. Okay, uh, some and there are these small questions that come up. For example, in the same verse, in verse 14, it says, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Uh, I've had questions being asked, say, okay, okay, pastor, uh, uh, which oil? Like groundnut oil, olive oil, you know. <laughs> like, okay, so inky pinky pong, you just choose one, you know. <laughs> right. uh, how much? Next question. One teaspoon, two, you know, how much should I take? All right, guys. You know, so we get too caught up on the methods or whatever, right? It's just a symbol. It's just um the water is there, water is there, use water, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's not really about the process or the method. Okay, so through the prayer of faith. Um, <clears throat> okay, and the next guideline. Okay, so what we've covered so far, three things. One is through personal faith in God. Through personal faith in God, you can pray for yourself, you can pray for others uh, as well. Um, through the prayer of agreement, uh, through the prayer of faith. And then now we go on to the next one is the word of command. Okay, we are in like in this fourth principle so far, but there seems to be like three recurring things that is common. Um, one is the word of God, one is faith, and one is acting on that faith. All of these principles, if you look at it, it's just these three ingredients, different way. Right, word of God, prayer, uh, and faith. Right, so through a word of command, Matthew chapter eight verse sixteen, it says, "When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, and healed all who were sick." Um, can someone read Psalm chapter thirty-three verse six? I hope I'm scared. Right? Psalm 33 verse 6. By the word. Easy, easy, guys. Easy. There, there. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. They, they stay host by the breath of his mouth. Right? Okay. So, by the word of the Lord. Okay, uh, what did, uh, so another scripture that we read before was Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. Right? They brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast them, cast out the spirit with the word. It's like not even plural, not words, 
<laughs> world, you know. Um, so there is power uh, in the authority that he's given to us, and through the word of command is another uh, is another guideline for us to minister healing and to receive healing. Okay, let's look at Luke chapter four, verse thirty-eight and thirty-nine. It says, "Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house." But Simon's wife, uh, wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made a request of him concerning her. So he stood over her, that is beside her, and rebuked the fever. Right? He rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. Immediately she arose. She just didn't arise, but she served them. Uh, this episode, this thing is nicely captured and chosen. If you've seen the series, uh, it's very nice. Okay, so um, what we are what what we are being encouraged to do is uh, again from the life of Jesus. We don't see Jesus being intimidated. It's like, oh, demon possessed. Oh, you know, seven demons, six demons in one body. I don't know what to do. He was not intimidated. He was not shaken. He was not afraid. He just. With the word, he cast them out. With the word, he rebuked the fever. Okay. Once again, guys, uh, what, uh, in everything that we learn, uh, just keep reminding yourself that you can do this. Don't just like its idea. Don't just like the idea or that, okay, there is power in the word and command. Don't just like it. Exercise it. Release it. Okay. Uh, and and that exercise is also is not just for um, you 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 use the, all these guidelines for those who have cancer or some deadly disease. Person has a headache, release it. Person has a stomachache, release it. Leg ache, whatever it is. Toothache. Okay. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You start building your faith in the smallest things. Are you with me? And you, you you start making that a habit. Um, you know, we all learn about discipline, right? Uh, or integrity. Um, let's say, for example, um, um, let's say a person is addicted to pornography. You know what I'm talking about? A person is addicted to pornography. Now, a person who's addicted to pornography, who's watching porn, is not going to do it in front of 50 people. Yes or no? He or she will do it when he or she is alone, when nobody can see. Right. And now that's like it's gone somewhere because now that's questions your your integrity and your self-control. It questions, it shows, it displays, okay, you're not you do not have self-control to overcome the temptation or whatnot. Are you with me? But what I've learned is you don't just appear on the top of the mountain right away, you climb. Isn't it? So the smallest decisions that you make in life shapes your habits and shapes your disciplines. That is, okay, in the smallest thing, even if nobody is seeing, even if nobody comes on time, I will choose to be there on time. Are you with me? It's the most simplest thing. But what is happening? You are training your mind. You're training your spirit, your inner man. That it doesn't matter what others think. So then, when you're being tempted, saying, okay, it's okay, nobody's here. Doesn't matter if nobody's here. I'm not going to do it. Are you guys with me? Right? So, like, through a word of a command, it's, it's, and all of this, just don't let it be an idea. Exercise it. Declare it in the smallest thing, in the smallest trivial things that you think, okay, you know, um, um, because in all of this, there is God. God is powerful, and also God is absolutely good, and is incredibly beautiful. That He wants to see you well, right? We've seen that. You know, it's His nature to see us whole, right? He is good, isn't it? Uh, another personal thing in my life. It's not related to healing or anything, but this is just a testimony of uh, just God is just is beautiful in His own way. One day, is my dad asked me to take uh, his car and uh, get it washed. And I've said this, right? Yeah, and uh, and I will never forget that story. Uh, I mean that, and I was so disappointed at the end of the day where uh, I forgot to 
to take his car for wash and I just looked up to the heavens and said, Lord, what am I going to do? I don't want to lie to him. And then it starts pouring. Uh, it's like he made the whole city of Bangalore to get rain just because, you know, I he made me feel that way, isn't it? And 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 that's how good he is. Uh, he's incredibly good. He's, he's so good. So, and I think uh, it will give him pleasure when we exercise this authority. Are you guys with me so far? Yeah, I, I hope everybody online is also doing well and still alive. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. Um, through the laying on of the hands, again, with anointing of oil or with a word of command. Uh, now, what's the name of this chapter? Practical guidelines for ministering healing, isn't it? Also receiving whatnot. Um, and we've also learned some of the principles, seven keys, seven principles to minister healing and whatnot. Now, you will see time and time again, there will be a combination of two, three things that will be used to minister healing. Right? Um, so when we pray, sometimes we will, you will just pray. You know, you will release a word of power, word of authority, word of command. Uh, if possible, you will even lay your hands on them. So you're not just laying your hands on them. While you're laying your hands on them, you're declaring the word of commandment. Like, I rebuke this fever to leave. While you're doing that, you are also exercising your faith. While you're exercising your faith, you are also speaking faith. You, you see what I'm saying? So when you're ministering healing or receiving healing, it's not just one thing that is happening. It can happen, but more than one thing is happening at a time. Are you with me? There's power of agreement. So uh, when I'm praying for Prince or whoever it is, okay, so I'm agreeing with you, you are agreeing with me. There's a power of agreement. My faith is being exercised. His faith is being exercised. I'm ministering. He's receiving. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so I am praying for him. He, he's praying for himself. <laughs> right? So there's a combination of so many things that's happening at, at one given point. So like what this point is saying here is through the laying on of the hands with the anointing of oil or with the word of commandment, different process. So let's look at a couple of scriptures and see what this to say. Um, Matthew chapter 8, verse 3. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. So what's happening? He put out his hand touched him, is coming in contact with him, and then saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Okay. Uh, now, something about leprosy that, that historically that you have to realize in the context of the church and uh, history-wise is it was not a disease. It was a curse. So that's why here they are saying immediately the leprosy was cleansed and not healed. And I'm not going to go too much into detail about this. And the first time it happens is in Numbers chapter 12, uh, when God calls Aaron and uh, Moses and his sister Miriam. So, you know Mo Moses, right? You know Moses had a brother and a sister, right? Yes or no? Aaron and Miriam. So what this, so once upon a time, there's this dude called Aaron has been talking bad about his brother. He's like, what this Moses fellow, he doesn't know what he's doing. And his sister also joined. It's like, yeah. You know, and as kids, um, parents always said, no, like, don't do this naughty things. God is always watching. Yes or no? <laughs> Apparently, they didn't get that news. So, uh, and God says, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come outside. It's like calling to the principal's office. Has anyone been there? Come to principal's office? I've gone there many, many times. <laughs> it's not a nice feeling, right? <clears throat> And so, I mean, I mean, so the whole thing of leprosy, it starts there. You can go back and read. Um, so it's a, it was like a curse, and so it's not a disease. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit of a side note. Okay, so Jesus touched and he spoke. Matthew chapter 8, verse 15. Um, so he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and served them. Now, see here, this verse, he just touched her. It doesn't say he spoke. Oh, he said anything. Are you with me? Okay, so he touched her and the fever left her. Um, then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. Uh, one more scripture. We move on. Matthew 20, 34. It says, so Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. 
and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him okay so this is talking basically about uh the methods different process if you come to the next page it uh, it talks about uh, administering healing through laying on of the hands can be done in several ways um, for example if, uh, if you're looking at your notes or PDF it's in one of the pages it says laying on of hands along with the prayer of faith in the name of Jesus laying on of hands and issuing a word of command in the name of Jesus laying on of hands along with the prayer of faith and anointing with oil laying on of hands and anointing of oil in the name of the lord uh, and no verbal prayer may necessarily be uh, made okay so uh, many different ways to uh, minister and receive healing by laying on of the hands and this is one of the most common ways isn't it uh, right so what are the some of the common ways that we've learned so far What are some of the common ways that we've learned so far, guys? Okay, one of the uh, common thing is what we've just learned is laying on of the hands, isn't it? Okay, uh, the next passage in your notes, it talks about when the sick uh, touch you. So there are times when you touch the people who are sick and you pray for them, you release a word of command over them, and then there are times when the sick people touch you and they are healed. Um, we see that in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, and suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. Uh, Matthew 14, 36, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Okay, so there are times when people may reach out and touch us in faith. Okay, because people recognize that, you are, that there's God's anointing over your life and they just want to touch you. <clears throat> and so their touch is their act of faith and their contact with the power of God. God honors their faith in doing this and they receive uh, their healing. Okay, um, are, you, are you all with me so far? Any questions? Yes. A little louder, Anand, I will be here. I want to pass the mic, please. Yeah. When we, when we are seeing all these practical guidelines of ministering and healing, when we are uh, observing all these practical uh, uh, ways or guidelines to ministering healing, so can we consider anything the greater one like uh, say, uh, when we are praying personally with, with a little own, louder yeah when we when we are praying personally with our own faith yeah is it is it the greater one or uh, see on the second one we saw like uh, uh, agreement yeah so can we consider this agreement is greater than the personal faith so we used to see like uh, when people are agreeing for one thing so uh, can we consider like this god will do this healing a uh, little more fast or uh, it, it depends on the personal faith or so yeah okay so basically what you're asking or saying is if is one guideline more important than the other if it is more uh more powerful or more, more powerful okay uh I wouldn't I wouldn't say that that one is better than the other like I said uh, in the beginning of this class itself these are guidelines uh, it's not rules right um, so rules says that okay you should do this you should religion says you should do this you should do this and only then you will attain this right but a relationship says okay these are just certain guidelines it's good that you can follow uh, again it's not saying you have to do this are you with me? Uh, see, I'm, I'm just saying that with the next point. I'm just kind of mixing that with the next point that says through the announcement of faith is another point. Uh, I didn't want to get there, but then through the announcement of faith is one of those points. Isn't it? Is what saying, uh, just look at that verse. It says, then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. All right, so what Jesus is doing, he's just announcing it. He's not touched it. Uh, there is no agreement that is happening. But then there is an exercise of faith. Centurion comes and says, Lord, I am a man in power. I know that you have 
that you are a man in power as well. So just say the word. So there's just an exercise of faith. Uh, that's the one common denominator here. It's this exercise of faith, basically. Uh, and so, and why I wanted to bring to this point is we can't limit God and put in a box and say, okay, he will work only through this, only through that. Right now, you can speak to a person in another country or another state, another city, and over the phone or an SMS. So like, I declare and I pray this over you. Yeah, how many of you do this? I've done that, right? I'm declaring, you know, healing over you in the name of Jesus. I typed out an SMS or a message and I sent it. What am I doing? I'm announcing uh, the faith, really. Uh, and so, what, am I going to say, okay, just because I didn't get a chance to lay my hands on you and pray, God is not going to heal you? No, right? And so, um, that's my uh, conclusion is not one method is better or powerful than the other. It all comes down to your faith and how you're willing to exercise it. I mean, uh, see, uh, people used to say like, I mean, we are when we are agree agreeing together, so it gives the power uh, for that uh, prayer and all. So people used to uh, tell like, I mean, uh, if you are praying for one thing to be yeah. healed or some for yes. any miracle. Yes. So if 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 the group of people combined and prayed, uh, people yeah. used to say like, tell like, uh, it will be more powerful than the this uh, one prayer. Yes. And the other thing is, uh, see, when a person, uh, I'll give you an example. A person is suffering from uh, a disease. Yeah. From many years. So uh, the uh, some of the pastors are uh, used to tell like, if you come, if you come to me, I'll pray and you will be healed. I don't know that the testimonies are uh, real or not. So when people see, I am the one who have a disease from mm -hmm. years. I have the own faith on God. Yeah. I'm praying since years on that. Yes. But uh, on the time when someone told me, when you go there, you'll be healed. Yeah. I went to that pastor. Yeah. So he he prayed and I got healed. Yeah. So uh, what we have to consider here. So I I don't have faith or uh, the prayer what I am doing don't have power. Or do I have to consider like the person who is praying, the pastor, right. have a more power? Right. So is it about power or is it about faith? You see, I'm praying since years. I have faith on God. Yes. I'm praying for the for not not even a miracle miracle only. Yeah. If anything in my life. Yeah. But if I go to someone, it's yeah. happened. I yeah. mean, we, we used to listen to so many testimonies yeah. on yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I mean, how we can consider these things? So see now, you still went right. That's you exercising your faith. The woman with the issue of blood, she came. And then the Bible says the power went out of Jesus and healed her. Right? So what is happening here is that you are recognizing that this person is anointed. Right? And there's another passage, I think, which we will get to there eventually, is once in, in, the, in Acts, once they witnessed that Peter's shadow healed a person, then they brought a bunch of crippled, and so that Peter's shadow will continue to heal them. You get what I'm saying? Is that they brought, they came, and that they are, it's their way of expressing faith. Expressing faith is one thing, and they're also recognizing, okay, this man of God is carrying the anointing of God. Are you with me? And so it's, again, it's not one thing is more than the other. It's you came in faith, and you recognize that there is power, and you got healed. And that's how kingdom works, basically. So I, I really don't know how to how else to answer that. Yeah. Okay. So oh, you you've been praying for yourself and you don't receive healing as well. Okay. I mean, I we don't have the answers, right? Like we don't know why it doesn't happen. I mean, that's the answers, and that's another thing that we've learned in this course is that we don't know. It. Uh, sometimes it may happen, sometimes it may not. Are you with me? So we don't know the answer, but then not knowing of the answer, we should not say that this is better than the other. It's okay to just accept that I don't know. And instead of wanting to know the answer, just rejoice in the fact that you've been healed. Instead of finding out why you did not happen when I prayed, we start 
going down the rabbit hole, as we say it, keep digging, 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 keep going down and down and down, but instead rejoice in the healing. And I, I would approach it that way. Uh, as in, so you see, the question is valid. The question is genuine. But I think there has to come a point where we have to look at certain situations more than the question. For us, we can understand uh, what what how things work and uh, how these healings and all happening. Sorry, when we 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 as believers, we know how things happen and uh, how it works. So when we are coming to the unbelievers and Gentiles, so so many people uh, have these testimonies when we go there and all. Yes. I got healed and all. Yes. So uh, uh, some of the people only focusing on these uh, miracles and uh, healings, like uh, if you come to us only you'll be healed and all so we we as believers we can understand what's going on but we come to if we come to the gentiles or unbelievers they don't know right so that's what my concern so i mean what is important in there that they need to know what do they need to know like uh, if you are praying also like people are not telling about these things like uh, if you pray I mean, if you have your own faith, they're not telling like this. If you come to us and all, you know. ah, so it's just okay. So what you're saying is that they're not being told that you can also pray for yourself. Is that what you're saying? Only if you come to me for prayer. Ah, yeah, that is, yeah, that is not right. I would say. Uh, in the earliest chapter, in the first or the second chapter, we learned one of the reasons why we the church doesn't move in the supernatural as much is the wrong teaching is one of the points, isn't it? Uh, we need to teach about this. This is a very important subject. Uh, healing and deliverance is very important. And like you said, there are so many testimonies of people coming to Jesus after they were healed. Uh, so many, countless, isn't it? And so it's our responsibility to teach about it as well, to talk about it, and to tell them that you can also do it. You don't just come to me so that I become famous. You know what I'm saying? And so, so even in that, uh, when a person prays for it, you you pray and you know, and you immediately give God the glory. You give God the glory, isn't it? You don't take the credit. You get what I'm saying? Okay, and say, I healed, I did this, my ministry did this. That's when it starts getting very ugly. Are we out of time? Okay. Kenina says, uh, uh, the prayer of it. When these guidelines take time. OK, uh, you know what? Uh, is it OK if we just take the break? We'll come back and address these questions. Is that OK? So I think uh, uh, we'll take our break and we'll come back. All right. See you guys.